uh, square wood like this, uh, like a two by two or something, and you turn the ends as fancy as you want to turn them. Can you see these? There you go. As fancy as you want to turn them on the ends here, do whatever you want, and then when you take all done turning these round balls like on the end, you take it to your bandsaw and you just cut it on a diagonal, and these make great door stops. Okay, I mean, to give these out for presents and stuff, people just they, they, you don't see a good door stop. They're all rubber, they're all junk in the hardware stores and stuff, but I know at my house I got a couple doors that ride a little high and, and they miss those other kinds and stuff, you know. So I put these down and um, they just make a nice door stop. So you can decorate them and do whatever you want with them, but to me, um, it's just a nice, this is a Sorby step center and uh, I have all different sizes. I, it's like the only center I use and uh, one of the reasons is is that it really grips the wood nice, and um, uh, they have good ball bearings in them, and they the point the wood is going to keep everything together, and I, I, don't know, I just like it better. Who is that made by? Sorby. Sorby. Yeah. Um, Rockler sells them. I think Woodcraft has them. One of the harder things, eggs involved are the hardest things to probably turn on a lathe and um, I'll show you what I do here. See this? It's got like a polished edge on it. Can you see that polish? Mm -hmm. The way I did that, it didn't come like that. It came with a. Uh, it was pretty messed up. Um, <laughs> Steve Sharp is a good friend of mine, and we turned together for a long time. We used to meet every week, and he got a bunch of these Scotch Brite pads. That from some business that he works at, and uh, the, the pads were kind of this big, and when they got this small, which is perfect for us, they were throwing them out. Now, if you ever saw a Scotch Brite pad, it's it's like impregnated with a resin or something, but it's um it's like a Scotch Brite you use for your pots and pans. You can put it on a faceplate with uh, some MDF backing, and then two of those glue them together, and when I, I reverse spin them. And when I do that, you can put a mirror finish on a tool in seconds. <coughs> in seconds. So it's like really nice to be able to, so if anybody knows about scotch break pads or where to get them or something like that, it'd be a great thing to get for the club. I love them. Do you know where, Chris? Yeah. How big of a roll do you want? <laughs> Coming across that way, I'm at about half of that height. You know, so some people like to be high, some low. This is where I'm at. By hand, just to turn it and make sure it's not hitting anything. I'm going to play with the skew for a minute. I just got the skew. Never used it before. <laughs> <laughs> so, you it in the demo. <laughs> turn fast. You know, a piece this big, I'm going almost 1900 RPM. That's good. I'm riding the bevel, and then I'm lifting up the handle in the back and coming down the side. Kind of like I did for that other piece. This is all just. Fundamental right now is just like um, trying to get down to where I can work with the ball. I gotta, gotta give myself some room on the end of the spindle. 
making some final cut. I haven't had time to make that in a long time yet. I'm going to throw something in a second. It doesn't make any dust. A lot of people, Eli Abizera has a, a wood turning shop and he says he gets like eight to ten turners in there. And if everybody is sanding and stuff, they're all coughing. And even though they wear respirators, they got air, you know, filtration system and stuff. He developed this, and uh, I don't know if he was the very first one to do it or not, but when you do it, it uh, it just rolls off. Instead of beeswax and yeah, there's no dust coming up. It's beeswax and uh, mineral oil, 85% mineral oil, and uh, only 15 to 20 percent, depending on you know, how good you can measure it, of beeswax, and it makes a paste. And this stuff it creates a slurry on your sandpaper, and it just ends up falling down to the ground. You don't have a lot of dust in the air. And is, stuff. It, is that mixture by weight? It's uh, no. It's and I measure the, the depth of the pot, and I put in that much be so that much beeswax is measuring like 15 percent, and then I pour the rest with mineral oil, and I I boil it for a while. It takes a little while to cook it together so that it becomes fused, like so that it's, um, if you don't, when you open up the lid, you'll get a lot of oil um, coming out and everything. But anyway, so Mike, if you want to put a finish on that, how's that work? On this? Yeah. Okay, if you want to. Break shellac. Shellac is the, the key to um, give, allowing you to put a, 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 a glossy finish on it. But you know, on bowls and everything else, when you put a real gloss on something, I've got a bowl over there, I mean, it's got a high gloss on it, and people don't like it as well as the way this feels. You know, so anyway, you all see my face. I don't know if all of you have like chop saws or anything, but I like to use a chop saw with my turning a lot. Especially if I'm production turning. I got a couple things I'm going to show you. But I prefer to take this thing over to the chop saw and cut the end off rather than trying to fire it. So, that's that stuff. This is going to go up against the, um, 
with this banner when I get back to my shop. And I do need to make this a little bit more round.